Hello new warriors, in this video we're going to go over one Jamie tip for every character in Street Fighter 6 and so if you want to see more educational content like this then be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and let's get straight to it. Do your best to force Blanca to the corner as much as you possibly can while also building your drink meter to ensure that your pressure is consistent. Secondly, be sure to practice perfect parrying in this matchup because dealing with Blanca balls is going to be annoying. So if you can match a perfect parrying, you'll be in good hands. Now against Kami, both of you are trying to fight for neutral and controlling space. And so your best option is to stay just outside of her range and use your standing heavy kicks, your swagger steps, and try and optimize drive rush combos to push it toward the corner and optimize your pressure moving forward. Now against Chun-Li, her normals really outprioritize yours. Her poke game is really strong. And so what you want to do is stay just outside of her safe range and use standing heavy kick, your swagger steps, but also try to maximize perfect parrying and drive impact against her Hazan shoe pressure if she gets too greedy. Now against a good DJ, they're not going to let you get in too easily. So this is all about patience. Try and ease your way in as much as you can, looking for opportunities as to when DJ makes a mistake because the first knockdown often leads to your victory. Now this is going to be a doozy. Dalsim is pretty much trying to keep you at bay while you're trying to get in. So you really have to exercise a lot of discipline and patience as you want to inch your way in and try and look for openings as to when Dalsim makes mistakes. When that happens, score the knockdown, use drive rush pressure, use drive impact pressure to keep him cornered and rinse and repeat until you get the win. Otherwise, have fun because it's going to be a tough one. Against Guile, you really have to respect his zoning game. He is extremely strong at what he does, and so you need to be very, very patient and inch your way in with Drive Rush to close the gap. And once you can score a knockdown, it'll be easier for you as you can bait out wake up options like OD Flash Kick and also put on pressure with your normals and combo game. Now the biggest tip I can give for Honda is to really master and practice perfect parrying since a lot of his approaches are pretty punishable if you can perfect parry such as EX headbutt, regular headbutts, butt slams, and so on and so forth. Just be careful though as he can really put pressure on you with his EX hands but you have more options than he does in neutral so try to outpoke him and maintain pressure as you go. Now against JP, his zoning game is incredible. And so you need to be careful of his command grab as that can be one of your greatest enemies in this matchup. Look for opportunities as to when he tries to set up a lot of his gameplay and optimize your reads to get a knockdown. JP suffers in defense where you excel in offense. Take advantage of that as much as you possibly can. And most importantly, be patient and don't get frustrated. Juri has some amazing pokes, such as her down medium kick, standing medium kick, and setting heavy kick. So you really need to be mindful as to when she uses these, because these can confirm into big damage. But most importantly, learn to respect her more when she's in her Feng Shui engine form, as this completely shifts her into a rushdown machine. And if you're not careful, she can literally turn the ties in her favor very quickly off of a knockdown. So be careful, play it safe, and once you get the knockdown, pressure her as much as you can to the corner. So against Ken, you really want to be mindful of his drive gauge depletion, as if you play too passive against Ken, he can deplete your drive bar 
really quickly by just blocking his Jinrai kicks. And his punish game is really, really good too. So try not to be too predictable in your approach. The best bet for you in this matchup is to look out for some of his pokes, such as standing medium kick, heavy kick, but also with a Jinrai because you can drive impact it. Or if anything, if you really want to go stylish, perfect parry and go for the punish. Kimberly is all about mobility and being unpredictable in the way she approaches you with her mix-ups. Roka's Emmy game is some of the best in the game with her spray can mix-ups. Corner offense is just very scary, so you have to be extremely careful and exercise caution when going for the offense. However, you do have the advantage in that she has stubby normals and you have good normals, which means you can really pressure her mid-range and push her to the corner because Due to her nerf from the beta, she no longer has access to a nice invincible wake up option. So you can take advantage of her in the corner by pressuring her with drive rush combos and go from there. Against Lily, one of her greatest strengths is her poking game. She has really, really strong poking tools, allowing her to really keep you at bay and pressure you to keep her off of you. Also, she becomes really scary when she has her wind stocks available as it amplifies her special moves, most notably Counter Aspire. And that move is literally plus on block, so don't even try and punish her because it gives her advantage. But the one thing you do have over her is that she's quite slow, she has no DP, and she's really reliant on that wind stock to really get her momentum going. So try your best to pressure her if you can by mixing up your approach, not being too predictable in your, your poking game. Try to out prioritize her and go for some dive kick mix ups, go for some drive rush pressure, keep her to the corner and you should be good from there. Do not let Luke's looks fool you. This guy has incredibly scary pressure. One of his most notable ways of pressuring you is with his flash knuckle, most notably the heavy punch version, as it's plus on block at plus four. And if you're not careful, this guy can whiff punish you and take advantage of you very, very fast. Things can snowball in his favor right away because he can whiff punish you and kill confirm off of very low risk, but high returns. However, Luke wants to close the gap and that's where you kind of want to be. You want to be able to close the gap on him to therefore pressure him. So learn to respect him. His full screen potential is still there. He does have sandblast to keep you at bay and his DP is very, very strong. So try not to jump in too frequently. But once you do get in on Luke, try your best to just poke him out and play safe. And once you get him in the corner, bait out DP, drive impact his normals and his combos if possible and you should be good. We've seen the likes of Idom and Justin Wong make excellent use of Manon and she's very scary once she starts to snowball with her medals. So your best bet is to try and neutral jump her throws as they can be very, very intimidating, very, very scared to deal with if you're up close. She kind of wants to be where you are. She wants to be in your face. You want to be in her face. But the difference is that she can do damage and do it very fast. And so you need to space yourself out really well. Use your strong pokes to out prioritize her. Her sweep is very deceptive in that it has surprisingly long range. So be very careful about that as well. Her target combos are really good. She has very high reward for what she does. But most importantly, like I said, just be extremely mindful of her medals. Don't give her the opportunity to snowball. Try and pressure on knockdown as she doesn't really have that many good wake up options. And so she's very reliant on her drive. She uses a lot of it to get her Oki started. So really force your aggression on her when you can and make sure to pressure her as quickly and swiftly as possible. Exercise caution when fighting against Marissa as Jamie, as she has a lot of armor on a lot of her moves. She can break armor with Gladius, Phalanx, Scudum, and Unfold. She has range, a lot of power, 
and most notably she has a lot of frame advantage which means that she can get in close on your face poke you for pressure and the moment she gets a hit confirm on you say goodbye to your meter and say goodbye to your life but what she does lack in is that she's very dependent on drive gauge to get a lot of her momentum started and a lot of her conversions really rely on her low and light she doesn't really have any sort of special cancelable lows that give her the opportunity to maintain that pressure and so what you have over her is combo potential you have the ability to snowball and basically whittle down her health as much as you can with your drive rush combos with your high level pokes and just really trying to play a smart neutral game if you can try and parry her as much as possible if you can master perfect parry in this matchup versus marissa i think it'll be a lot easier as her plus frame moves are pretty slow and if you're able to react to it and perfect parry you can easily gain the advantage and maintain that pressure moving forward so in this matchup against ryu it's a pretty honest one a lot of Ryu's potential comes from his pokes, most notably crouching medium kick and forward heavy punch, in addition to of course his Hadouken for zoning pressure, but if you're able to stay out of his safe range and optimize with your pokes, most notably standing medium kick, your sweeps, and just really trying to avoid getting caught in the loop that Ryu tends to put players in, his drive gauge potential is really strong, as well as the dungeon stocks. When Ryu has Denjin, he's pretty scary to deal with, but again, stay out of that range where he can poke you and prod you and confirm into a lot of heavy damage and make good use of your pokes to confirm into your damage and keep him cornered for as long as possible. Now don't get too greedy because he does have good wake up options, so try your best to bait that out, but once he's in the corner, or at least once he's knocked down, you do have the advantage, so stay on him as much as you can. Now last on the list, we have none other than the certified grappler, Zangief. In this matchup, poke, poke, and poke. Try your best to just keep Zangief at bay because you know what happens when he gets too close. He can grip you and he can destroy you once you're just unaware of his approach. And surprisingly in SF6, Zangief has access to a lot of incredible mix-ups and he makes good use of drive combos. So just be mindful that if you do get too greedy or you get too pokey, Zangief will likely read you and he will get the optimized combos on you. So just be wary of that. Of course, he's really slow and he's very limited in his neutral game, whereas you are very fast and you are very poke driven. So again, make use of your options when you have it. Go for the knockdowns and try your best to get the most Okizemi possible on him and keep him cornered, keep him pressured, and you should take this one pretty easily. And just to wrap things up, I want to say thank you for making it this far in the video and enjoying the content thus far. If you want to know more about Street Fighter 6, more educational content like this, then of course, as always, be sure to like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. And new warriors, I'll see you on the next video. Take care and keep fighting.